Well, it's been a little while, so have patience. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Paul believes, St. Paul begins all of his letters by greeting the saints that are in the different places that he's addressing. So, I greet you all as saints in Norfolk, Atlanta, Chicago, wherever. Okay. Did you wake up this morning thinking that you were a saint? That's too bad, because we are. All of us are. Or at least we have the potentiality of being one. Would you call a rosebud a rose? It's not completely bloomed yet, but it's a rose. Actually, the glorification of saints in the Orthodox Church has been taking place for centuries. Few people today really do understand how that happens. Does the church make a saint? Are there special groups which decide who can be considered ready for sainthood? Are saints elected by a majority of votes, hopefully before the Republican and National Conventions? Does a person have to perform a certain number of miracles in order to qualify? The answers to these questions are truly surprising. We know that there are several categories of saints. Prophets, evangelists, martyrs, ascetics, holy bishops, priests, women, and those who live a righteous life in this world. What they all have in common is holiness of life. Three times in the book of Leviticus, God tells us to be holy, because he is holy. We must consecrate ourselves, for we are his people. As St. Paul says, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. St. Peter reiterates this commandment in the New Testament many times, challenging us to be able to obey God's commandments and submit our will to his will. Everyone, who's, everyone is challenged to manifest holiness in their lives. For we all must become saints. That's why we are created. That's the life that is within us. This is a special and very, very common calling for all of us from God himself. It is not something reserved for the clergy, monastics, and those who are more pious. Everyone who has been baptized into Christ must live in such a way that Christ lives with us. Oh, within us, excuse me. Do you not know, St. Paul asks, that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? So the glorification of saints in the Orthodox Church is a recognition that God's holiness is manifested in the church through these grace-filled men and women whose lives were pleasing to God. Very early on, the church recognized the righteous ancestors of Christ. So we have the Feast of the Forefathers, those who predicted his coming. We have the prophets, and those who proclaimed the gospel, the apostles and the evangelists. Then those who risked their lives and shed their blood to bear witness to Christ, martyrs and confessors. <coughs> I submit to you, it is certainly evident that these two categories, confessors and martyrs, generally embrace the entire community of saints. There was no special canonization process, but their relics were treasured, and the annual anniversaries of their martyrdoms were celebrated. In fact, the tombs in which they were, they were laid in the ground are the very ones that people served liturgy on for years. Now, I'm not quite sure, but that beats a little bit of a rally in this song. Later, the ascetics who followed Christ through self-denial were numbered among the saints, bishops, priests, holy women, who proclaimed the true faith and fought against heresy were also added to the list. Finally, those in other work, in other walks of life, who manifested holiness were recognized as saints. While the glorification of a saint may be initiated because of miracles, it is not an absolute necessity for canonization. 
The Roman Catholic Church, for example, requires three verified miracles in order to recognize someone as a saint. The Orthodox Church does not require this. There are some saints, including Saint Nicodemus or Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain, and Saint Innocent of Moscow, commemorated in March, who have not performed any miracles as far as we know. What is required is a virtuous life of obvious holiness. And a saint's writings and preaching must be fully ordered <coughs> in agreement with the pure faith that we have received from Christ and the apostles and taught by the fathers and the ecumenical councils. Can the church make a saint? The answer is no. Only God can do that. We glorify those whom God himself has glorified, seeing in their life true love for God and their neighbors. The church merely recognizes that such a person has cooperated with God's grace to the extent that his or her holiness is beyond doubt. Are saints elected by special panels or by a majority vote? Again, the answer is no. Long before an official inquiry in a person's life is made, that person is venerated by the people who were, by the people where he or she lived and died. For example, we have, we have in our midst, His Eminence Archbishop Dimitri. I knew him for many years, far more than some of you may have known him, but I submit to you that there are thousands of faithful who would proclaim his sainthood going back a number of years. The memory of certain special people, holy people, is kept alive by the people who pray for his or her soul, or who ask him or her to intercede for them. Sometimes people will visit the grave or have icons written through love, through their love for the person. Then a request is made, usually through the diocesan bishop, for the church to recognize that person is a saint. A committee such as the Orthodox Church in America's Canonization Commission is formed to research the life of the person who is being considered for glorification and to submit a report to the Holy Synod starting its reason, stating its reasons for the person should or should not be recognized as a saint. Then finally the Holy Synod decides to number that person among the saints and have icons written and liturgical services composed. The formal rite of glorification begins with a final memorial service for the person about to be canonized, after which vespers and matins with special hymns to the saint are chanted and the saint's icon is unveiled. The saint's life is published and the date of his or her commemoration is established. The other Orthodox churches are notified of the glorification so that they can place the new names, the new saint's name on their calendars. Now all of that is very, very technical and very, very specific. But you know what? Most of us don't wait for all this gobbledygook to happen. I know many times I have said to people that I've been speaking with, you know, that person really is a saint. I don't say that lightly, you see, because, God bless you, we are indeed all saints. That's why God created us, to be saints. We're not fooling around in this world when we live in this world and do right things. Oh yes, we sin. I would dare say that many of the people that are commemorated as saints when they were younger, sinned or they did something that was really, really wrong. Through the prayers of all the saints, let us each begin today to work toward virtue and holiness so that in due time, we can greet each other as a saint in the other church. God bless each and every one of you. And by the way, be careful, tomorrow's the fourth.